Alright, what's up guys? It's been a while since I made a video. Let me just see if my camera's good. Yeah, you can see me. Alright, it's been a while since I made a video, but uh, I'm back. I'll be making videos regularly now. Uh, I'm just going to show you guys how and why you would want to layer uh, kick drums and snare drums on top of each other to make uh, like a certain sound that you want. Say that you want your you want a certain sounding kick drum, but you don't have the samples that sound like that instead of like getting a decent sample or a sample that's almost there and like boosting the highs that the sample doesn't have or boosting the lows that the sample doesn't have it's better and like I guess more fun to get a couple of samples like a couple kick drums and mix them together and then make a certain sound so uh, I mean, I haven't done this beforehand. I'm just going to pick a couple samples. This I got uh, from this site called wavealchemy.com, I think. I'll find it and link it in the description. But it's a free uh, club kick sample pack that I got a couple days ago. But the idea, I'm going through these samples. And I'm going to find a, a sample with a good, like, punchy mid. Then, uh, like, a kind of like a ticky high end. And then another one that has a uh, a good low end. That's pretty good. My computer's freaking out. That's pretty good low end. So we'll just rename this kick high, kick low, kick mid, and we'll put them all in uh, their own little thing. Okay. So we got to layer them all together. All right. So say we want all these to mesh together. We got this kick that I'm going to use for the mid, which for kicks the mid range is like between like 70 and like 110 or 120 hertz. So we're going to filter out uh, everything but those frequencies. Alright. This kick does have a good, pretty good low end, but just for the sake of example I'll use a different one for the low end. Alright. Went too far. What, what, yeah. right, there you go. And you're gonna be tweaking the uh, filter cutoffs uh, as you go, just so they mesh perfectly, or as good as you can get them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now what you want to do also is right click on each of these and click uh, cut itself and what that's going to do is make it so like you can press this as much as you want. The sample ends as soon as you press it again. See there's no over, there's no, uh, there's no overlap so that's, phew, that sounds pretty sick already. See that? That, that sounds pretty damn good already shit but uh we'll just uh i don't know i mean <laughs> honestly i would keep this how it is but just for the sake of showing y'all uh i'll tweak it a little we could uh change the pitch of this mid uh to uh mesh better with the low the low is like kind of pretty dang on low so we could um heighten a little see that See that and then like uh, you can mess with the phasing
what that just is it reverses the polar polarity of uh, each uh, mixer channel and so um, like say you have one sound that is cut off at a hundred Hertz all right and then you have another sound that is uh, like uh, like I don't know like 105 Hertz that overlap is gonna cause some phasing issues and it might sound bad it might sound good but uh, it's just something to tinker with it so like okay say my mid gets cut off at a hundred and my low gets cut off at like 105 the mid and the low are gonna clash in those five Hertz and so if they're causing a problem you could instead of uh, excuse me uh, changing the filter cut off for one of them uh, you could experiment with reversing the polarity so one of them phases out the other one alright so uh, it's just something to uh, tinker with and I do it quite often it's just another thing that you can do but uh, honestly that sounds sick I like how it sounds like this I really do I would use that I'm gonna save that okay um, something you could do is uh, layering snare drums it's not layering snare drums is kind of uh, harder just because there's more frequencies you have to deal with I mean you're dealing with pretty much everything from like 200 Hertz to um, like I don't know all the way to 20 kilohertz so um, I have this kit called survival drum kit I got it for free I can't remember if it's always free or if I got it for a deal but um has some pretty good stuff in it we'll um use this we'll uh lay out this beat right quick um, bush, bum, bush, bum, 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 bush. All right. and if y'all can hear those crackles it's just because my computer's trash i'm getting a new one soon but this is the same idea. So I have uh, this one, which is kind of like a high fizzy thing. This is more of a snapple one. That's more of a, a a a beef to it, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's the same same kind of idea. My dogs are barking. I don't know if y'all can hear that. See, without this uh, punchy thing, it sounds kind of weak. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you could tune that too. Ooh, that sounds good. That sounds good as shit. And then you could add this, like a little reverby thing. Give it even more reverb. Oops, wrong thing. And put some hats on it. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. So uh, yeah, instead of just uh, trying to get one sample that has it all, it's easier and it's better and you have a lot more control and you get some creative stuff if you uh, stack uh, shit itself. And then so like if you have, um, so you have all three in right here. That's your kick right there. You could... Uh, record it so you put a uh, uh, Edison on here and record it. See that? You uh, just put that right here, and there you have this. And if you want, you can either even uh, tweak this, you know. But I'm definitely gonna keep that. That's sick. But uh, how long has this been? 10 minutes? Damn, that's long. Alright guys, well, see ya.